Okay, guys, Saturday, the 24th of February. So let's have a look at our US indexes. So we're going to start on the S&P 500 as always. I'm going to have a quick recap of this market from last week in relation to our analysis, and then we'll move on to the trading week ahead. So our zones from last week are still on the chart. And what we went over last week was how, although this market had made a strong bullish run up, after such a strong downward move like this, there was the very real potential that bears would step back in um, and press the market back down. So what were we looking at last week? We were looking at, let me just get rid of the arrows, this spike up from the 7th of February. And what we went over was how if we broke down below this once again, so we tested it on the Friday, if we started to break down below this level once again, so we started testing it on Monday, tested at our key resistance, rejected, and then into Tuesday, we rejected at this level, started to break down below. If we've seen this, it's very likely the S&P was coming down to at least that 2702 level and the round number at 2700. And what you can see is the market, even on the Wednesday, we tried to press up again. We rejected at the resistance level straight down into our support. On the Thursday, we actually tried to break down a little bit more found support, pressed up, where do we press up and reject from? Our key level up above at 2737. And then coming into Friday, uh, from the close of this Thursday candle, we just rallied all the way back up into where our key resistance area. So this is why even when you are overall bullish or overall bearish on a market, if you're a day trader, it's still worthwhile looking for the, the smaller movements. Um, because even on waves down like this, you still tend to find you have updates, updates. Even when you're having strong bullish rallies, you tend to find they're still selling coming into markets. I and mean, as a day trader, we really want to be looking at both sides of the coin and just finding out which side is going to be more powerful at any given time so we can basically ride their coattails. So coming into next week, what have we got? Well, the first thing is the zones really don't need to change at all. This one up here, we're going to have a little look at. Let's delete this one first of all, but these zones um, remain the same. So you can see them on the left hand side. I'm not going to run through them all over again. Uh, we did it last week. It's the exact same levels. But what we're basically looking at is um, what we might do is bring this one up ever so slightly as well. So we've got seven, sorry, 2728 or 29 to 2737 at present. Sorry, you can probably hear my dog in the background <laughs> giving a, a nice loud sigh. It's a Saturday. She wants to go for a walk. She doesn't want to be <laughs> watching me work. Uh, 2728 to 2742. And what we're doing is we're just taking into account the close um, on, what was a Sunday candle? The open on the Monday, the open and the close on the Friday where the market has paused and then we've started to break back down once again. We're also taking into account this little spike down from the 9th of January. Right here. So this is really a level of um, support and resistance. Now up above, we've also got, I'm going to make this into two zones here. We've got this spike up around about 2763 down to 2755 right here. So we just split those zones. What we're doing is we're taking into account recent price action. We're also taking into account having a little bit of look of what was happening to the left. Um, it makes a little bit more sense to me. So we've had a spike up and a spike up here on the Monday and the Wednesday. But really, if we are starting to break up from here once again, it's a good level to look for support. And the bounce is higher, at least up into this 55 level. Really, I'd expect to see um, the 2770 area tested. So as we went over last week, this is when we start getting back up into the stronger resistance. And now what we've done is last week, we've created this level of structure. We've then broken down, nice spike up here on the Thursday, the 22nd. We've also got the spike up from the 7th of February. So if we see the market holding above here coming up to Monday, the pullbacks for bullish continuation um, certainly make sense. Now, down below there, we've also created this level of support right here at around about 2722 down into, let's have a look here, around about 2718. Right here. So for me, again, this is a more minor level. If we're starting to break back down below this level, we really need to come down at least below 2728. If we start to see that break down, 
then this area once again becomes good resistance to look for those moves down. We've got support at 2722 to 2718. For me, it's a little bit more minor. Um, I would then be looking for slightly stronger moves down toward 2706. And then again, key support starts 2702 to 2688. And then down below there, 2673 to 2658. Both of these remain very good levels to look for bullish bounces. Um, on the S&P. So for the market also, as we're starting to come back up, where are the real key resistance levels? So this 2780 area is a good level of resistance, but for me, the key levels start at 2790 to 2796. This is a good level to look for that potential resistance, as is the level up above at 2806 to, to 2812 right here. These are really the main levels I wanna watch. For resistance on the way back up. And then as we start to break up above there, we've still got key levels up here um, to watch. Also, before we start getting back into the all-time highs, really, it's if we start breaking up above 2852, that we'd then be looking for bullish bounces and new all-time highs on the S&P. Still a long way to go on this market as yet. So coming into next week, quick recap, this level remains very important now, 2742 to 2728. If we're holding up above this, it's good to look for pullbacks and the bullish bounces higher, at least up into 2755. But really, I'd be expecting to see 2770 tested. If we're starting to break down below here, it's also a good area of potential resistance. We've got a more minor level down below. Key support starts once again at that 270, it's really 2703, um, and then the zone just down below at 2673 for bullish bounces. Up above uh, resistance, that, that 2770 to 2780, but really the key levels are starting at 2790 to 2796. 2806 to 2812. This whole area up here is um, a much stronger level of resistance than certainly this area here where we've already seen the reaction. And that's the main thing we're going to be watching next week, guys. Uh, so that is everything for the S&P. Let's move on to the NASDAQ. Okay, let's do the exact same thing with the NASDAQ. So with this market last week, we were a little bit more neutral. And then what we can see is for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we had the open, the close, the open, the close, almost at exactly the same level. So the market was chopping sideways, which is showing you a market which has a little bit of indecision. Um, it wasn't overly bearish. It wasn't overly bullish coming into last week until the Thursday and the Friday, after we tested at our support level. So what were we looking at last week? Um, up above, we had that resistance at 840 to 816, which we tested on the Tuesday. We then came all the way down on the Tuesday also to test the 6740 level where we found support. And then really coming into the Wednesday, what I was looking at was um, if we start to break either of these levels now. So we came up and we've tested, we've came down and we've tested. If we started to break up above, we were expecting to move up to those 6880 levels. And we actually did that on the Wednesday. We broke up above, we came up and tested. But then what we went over last week also was this area up here was where the very key resistance started once again. And what you can see is we tested and then the market crashed all the way back down to um, 6,715. Broke down on the Thursday, tested at our support level 785. Bounced all the way back up. Where did we test at? 3816, where the resistance came back in. And then on the Friday, found support at this level and rallied very strongly up into this previous area of resistance. So again with this market, the zones are still pretty good. And we don't really want to mess with them too much. What we can do is with this one, really 905 to 920, we can just bring this up ever so slightly um, to take into account 930. Just want to take into account the close and the open of these candles right here. This is or remains strong resistance right here. So coming into next week, depending on how we're seeing the market reacting on Monday, we may just break straight up above. Coming into Monday trading, this remains good resistance. Um, certainly now pullbacks also to this level here, very good to look for bullish bounces because potentially what we're doing now is breaking higher, making the pullback, breaking higher. So turning into a, a trending movement, the low, the high, higher low, potentially the higher high, the pullbacks, and then for continuation. We'd really want to bring this one up a little bit at 6793, 
up to I don't know, six, really six, eight hundred. Just taking into account the close, the open, the close, the open, and the close of these candles. So pullbacks next week to either of those levels. Really good to look for bullish bounces. This remains key resistance up above. Um, if we're starting to break up above those levels, they're also very good to look for support and bullish bounces higher, really up into um, what I'm going to do is take it from, I don't know, it's 6, 9, 65, 60, 67 to 68 up into, I'm going to take it all the way up into 6994 right here. This is also very key resistance. We've had multiple tests here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Up above here, I'd be happy to start looking for those bullish bounces at least up into the 6960 levels. I'd really expect it to test up to the 6970 to 6995, which again is very key resistance. If we're breaking up above there, then really we're looking at the NASDAQ once again pressing up to test at the previous all time highs. And really, that's the main things I'm looking at on this market coming into next week. So, a quick recap first of all, the zones are pretty much the same. Um, at present, we have made a very strong move up. If we now see pullbacks to the 840 to 816, or the really the 800 to the 767 level, good to look for bullish bounces and continuation, looking for the potential of a start of an uptrending movement. These areas remain key resistance up above. We're using those previous levels of structure as our evidence. If we break up above, we're looking for support and the bounce is higher. This is very key resistance. Again, if we break up above there, really, we're coming back into the all time highs. Okay, so that's pretty much everything for next week, guys. Hopefully you find that useful for your trading next week. I hope you all have a good uh, trading week next week. I'm James Orr and thank you.